Hey, what's up, my friends? Chris here from Mixdown Online, and today for Mixdown Q and A, we're gonna talk Cubase. All right, so I'm gonna answer a few questions that were sent to me. Some are related to Cubase 10.5 and some other stuff are related to just Cubase in general. But before we jump in, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to share and to like. And if you're new here on the channel, feel free to subscribe to the channel and to click the notification bell. All right, so now let's start with the first question. Hey, Chris, $60 for an upgrade is a decent price. And the new features are okay, but what's your opinion on waiting until the next full upgrade for the price point? You know what I mean? Okay, yes, I know what you mean. Now, this upgrade was priced at $90 Canadian, or it was like around $60 US. Well, let's keep that in Canadian money. Um, so it was 90 bucks to upgrade this version. The last version was 150 bucks, I believe. So if you upgrade from 9.5 to 10.5, if you look on the Stankberg website, uh, they're gonna charge you $240 Canadian. It is basically the price of the upgrade of Cubase 10.5 plus the one from Cubase 10. So you're not going to miss anything or um, have a better deal if you upgrade now opposed to upgrading for Cubase 11. They will only add the price of Cubase 10.5 upgrade plus the one from Cubase 11. So if you want to wait Cubase 11 to come out before upgrading uh, from Cubase 10, it is not gonna be cheaper and it's not gonna cost you more. And again, that goes according to what I've seen so far. And like I always say, if you don't have the needs to upgrade, just don't. And that is the beauty of a system like Cubase. It's not based on a subscription model. I'm using Adobe, the Adobe Suite, and this one is based on a subscription model. But Cubase, um, they charge for the upgrades, but you're free to upgrade or not. Okay, so that's the beauty of it. So if you're happy by using Cubase 8.5 or 9 and you want to stick to that version, you don't need to upgrade. You can stick with that version and just work with this one without having to spend more if you don't need to. So there you go. So I hope that answers your question. Hi, Chris. Thank you so much for your videos and all the work you do for us. I have a question concerning the colors. How did you manage to give a red color to the high pass and low pass filter in the EQ section? Very simple. So let's jump in Cubase and let me show you how I did that. So I'm just going to open the channel settings of that track. And as you can see, we have the, um, the high pass filter and low pass filter that are in red opposed to green. Um, that is the uh, default color. So to change that, very simple, you go up into uh, on edit, go down to preferences. And if you go down to user interface, you'll have all sorts of different color options you can choose from. So you just have to go down to mix down rack colors and click on pre filters. And there you go, you can choose the color you want. And this is going to be where you're going to be able to change the color of your filters. That simple. Now, next question. How do you get to put that color shade on your tracks? This is so cool. So this is related on my video on Cubase 10.5 that I released last week, where I used that type of uh, color shade on my tracks like this, okay? Which looks pretty cool. So I just did that for the looks, okay? Um, so let me show you how I did that. First, let's look at the default color palette that we have using Cubase. Very simple. We only have a um, just a limited um, choice of colors. Uh, now, if you want to change that, what you need to do is to manually set your own color palette or to load a project that has a color palette already installed. So if you want to put your hands on my color palette, I'm going to leave a link down below in the description so you can download my Cubase project that has that color palette installed uh, in it. Okay, so let's open that color palette. And I'm just going to close this project and open the other one. Okay, and there you go. So this is my color palette. So if I click on top here, this is what I uh, came up with. So if you want to use that color palette on your projects, what you need to do is to click on project, go down to project color setup, and then you'll have the project color setup window. What I'm gonna do here is to click on options 
and then I'm going to click on store color set as default. So this way, um, this color palette will be the default color for future projects from that point on. Note that your older projects are not going to use this color palette if it wasn't installed before. But once you make that color palette your default palette, all new, uh, new Cubase projects will use that color palette. Okay, now from that point on, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just create a new blank project, just an empty one and show you how I came up with that graded um, track look. Uh, so first, I went into Edit, down to Preferences, and uh, we're gonna go down to User Interface and then to Track and Mix Console Channel Colors. We've seen that on the last video. This is a new feature of Cubase 10.5 where we can uh, color the entire mix console. And uh, we have the color strength and everything. So I'm not gonna go through that. Watch my other video if you wanna take a closer look to these features. Uh, but what I'm gonna focus on is right here on top, the auto track channel color mode. And if you're using an older version of Cubase, um, Cubase 10, 9.5, and so on, you're going to find that option under Event Display and Tracks. This is going to be listed under Tracks, okay? But for Cubase 10.5, it is under Track and Mix Console Channel Colors. And you just need to click and to select Use Previous Track Color Plus One. That's it. Click on Apply. What's going to happen is um, from an empty project, uh, when you're going to create a track. A Cubase will use the first color of your palette and apply the next color for the following tracks. So let's try this out. I'm going to create like, let's go with 88 tracks. So again, if you want to download my color palette for Cubase, you can click on the link down below and put your hands on this pretty nice color palette. Now the question is about Cubase 10.5. I've had it updated for like four hours and I'm still trying to sort missing plugins out. Nightmare. All right, so let's check this out. Now this is something that can happen when you upgrade to a new version of Cubase. Uh, something that you can do if you have like uh, missing plugins or um, a bunch of plugins are blacklisted, um, that probably means that there are not supported in this version of Cubase. And chances are that they are 32-bit plugins. So that will happen if you upgrade from Cubase 8.5 that used to support 32-bit plugins. But in the latest versions of Cubase, only 64-bit plugins are supported. So that might be the case. So you have to check this out. So if you upgrade it from 8.5, uh, that is probably the case. So if you go and click on Studio on top and go down to VST Plugin Manager, you'll have the list of uh, VST effects installed on your system and also VST instruments. And you also have the black list, all the plugins that don't work. Like, like in my case, I have like a, a bunch of plugins here that I don't use and uh, that are probably old 32-bit plugins anyways. So what you can do is to make sure that you have all 64-bit plugins installed on your system. Um, so you're probably going to have to reinstall a few plugins, download the 64-bit version of that plugin, reinstall it, and you're going to be good to go. If we look down to the uh, VST plugin path settings, this is the location where the uh, VST plugins and instruments are installed on my system. Maybe those were not well transferred uh, while upgrading, so you're probably going to need to check that out. So open your oldest version of Cubase. If you were using Cubase 10, open Cubase 10. Open the VST plugin path settings on your older version of Cubase. Uh, check what you have and make sure you have the same path on your new version of Cubase. Um, if you want to create a new path, you can just click on the plus sign and just create a new path. And that happens a lot when um, when people install VST instruments like banks of VST instruments on another external drive. Chances are that Cubase will not find them right away. So you're probably going to need to point the VST plugin path to the correct folder. And what's going to happen is the next time you're going to open up Cubase, Cubase will scan those new folders and you'll get your plugins back. Now let's go with the last question, question number five. How was your workflow to take all your preferences over to this new version of Cubase? 
Sure, not only by exporting your profile manager. Was the color scheme procedure the same as the last version? Create a new session and import your colors. Now, this time around, when I did the upgrade uh, from Cubase 10 to 10.5, I installed the upgrade version and not the full version. Now, when you upgrade from an older version to a new version of Cubase, you don't need to, uh, to do a clean install. You just need to upgrade from the previous version. So the only thing you need to do is to download the uh, upgrade installer and then just install Cubase from your last version. Usually what happens is Cubase will copy all your user preferences to the new version of Cubase by itself. It worked well for me this time, uh, but I remember when I upgraded from 9.5 to 10, it worked like maybe at 75%, so there's some stuff that I needed to transfer manually. Um, so you can watch a video that I did a year ago on that topic especially. I'm gonna leave the link on top and down in the description. And in that video, I talk about the profile manager. This is where you can uh, create yourself a profile and export that profile so you can import that profile back into the new version of Cubase. Uh, but if you want, you can do that manually also, okay? By just, um, by just going down here to Steinberg and uh, Cubase 10, if 10 it was your previous version, and open the user setting data folder and do the same for Cubase 10.5. And this is where you're gonna be able to manually transfer the settings that you want from one version to another. Like I said, uh, by default, Cubase is supposed to transfer everything uh, itself, which it did in my case. Uh, but if something happens and you're not very sure and you're missing a few things, uh, you can actually do that manually. Um, so if you don't want to use the, you, the, the profile manager, you can do that from these windows. Uh, and what you need to look for mainly is the user preferences.xml. This is where all of your main preferences are going to be stored. And you just drag and drop it into the new folder. And that's it. If you want to make a backup before you do so, that might be a good idea. Something you can do is just to rename the user preferences file and just probably just add the uh, old at the end that will rename it and copy over the new one and you're good to go. So this is basically it. But if you want to know more about this, you can check my video that I did a year ago. All right, my friends, I hope that was helpful. If so, don't forget to share, to like, and to subscribe if you're new to the channel. And also, if you have any questions or comments, leave everything down below. Until next time, take care and see you.